Good morning, and welcome to the historic Basilica of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you joining us through live stream, and we pray that you are in good health. Our presider this morning is Father Cecil Critch, and our entrance hymn is Tree of Life, number 373 in the Catholic Book of Worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone, again, and welcome. Good morning, Father. As we journey, continue our journey through the season of Lent, uh, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts today, and as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we ask the Lord to heal us and strengthen us on our journey. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. 
punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath day to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is number 19. Lord, you have the words of eternal life.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house and marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. They then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. When he was in Jerusalem during the Passover festival, many believed in his name because they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus on his part would not entrust himself to them because he knew all people, and he needed no one to testify about human nature, for he himself knew what was in within the human person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As we continue our journey through Lent, we reflect today on the quality of our Lenten observance. And in the first reading, we, we talk about the commandments of God, the Ten Commandments, which we know. Do we keep the commandments of God, the commandment to love God and our neighbor as the very roots of our faith? Do we follow Christ and live our Christian lives in integrity and truth? Last week in the Gospel, we saw the transfigured, glowing face of Jesus. And today we are shown the very human face of Jesus, who is not very happy with what he sees in the temple. It is Jewish Passover, the most important religious feast. The city of Jerusalem is filled with pilgrims from everywhere visiting the temple. For the Jewish people, the temple was the visible sign of God's presence on earth. They offered various sacrifices to fulfill the law. And that what sacrifice was offered depends on how rich or poor you were. And the supplies for the sacrifices were supplied by the merchants because people were coming from a distance. They couldn't carry animals with them for sacrifice. 
But these merchants' greed replaced the service they were supposed to provide pilgrims. The religious leaders had put rituals over morality, over love of neighbor. And how many times did God tell the people that mercy and love, not sacrifice, was most important? According to the background of this gospel passage, merchants had put the temple marketplace in the area of worship reserved for Gentiles, so only Jews would have a place there. So it is no surprise that Jesus cleaned out this particular section of the temple to make more room for God's presence there. Jesus wanted them to know that the temple, the house of God, was a universal house of God for all nations, where every man or woman on earth would find a place in which to pray and worship God. We reflect today that the church, our church, is the temple built of living stones, the body of Christ, the sacrament of Christ to reveal the powerful and life-giving presence of Jesus to the world. But often in our human history, we all know that the church has not been life-giving presence for people, has revealed sometimes a distorted image of Jesus Christ to the world, one that is not fully in keeping with the gospel of Jesus Christ. In our modern times, we have the example of the suffering, sufferings of victims of cler clergy sexual abuse. Our own di archdiocese is working to bring healing to the victims of clergy abuse. And it is like a cleansing of the temple too, isn't it? Children must feel safe everywhere in society, but especially in our church communities. It will take time to get that trust back again, but rebuilding that trust must be a priority. Just as Jesus wanted to purify the temple, the risen Lord is constantly working to purify and renew our church in every age. All of us who make up the church need to be open to Christ's purifying zeal, to be a part of the call to renewal and to our mission as church, which is to go and make disciples, go and preach the gospel. We are a missionary church. Go and preach the gospel of Jesus to those who have not heard it, to those that have not heard it. We all need to be listening to what the Holy Spirit is saying to us, the church, not only universally, but also in our archdiocese and even in this basilica parish in these many, these challenging times. Those in positions of church leadership have a special responsibility to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church so that as to bring it more into line with what Christ intended when he founded it. Our own modern prophet, Pope Francis, who of course is on a peace mission to Iraq, a very brave man. Pope Francis has a vision for the church. He told us in his apostolic, beautiful apostolic exhortation in 2013 called Evangelii Gaudium, the joy of the gospel, that he desires a church that is restless, always close to the abandoned, the forgotten, and the imperfect. He said, I quote, I see clearly that the thing the church needs most today is the ability to heal the wounds and warm the hearts of the faithful. It needs nearness and proximity. I see the church as a field hospital after battle. That's his vision of church. Pope Francis also says he desires a joyful church with the face of a mother that understands, caresses, and accompanies. He urges us to dream of such a church, believe in it, and innovate with freedom. All of us who are church need to listen to the challenge, to that challenge of Pope Francis, to the challenge of the Holy Spirit, and to be open to the purifying presence of the risen Lord. For we all have our part to play in ensuring that the church is what the Lord intends it to be. The gospel should speak also to us personally. Each of us was made in the image and likeness of God. In baptism, each of us became a child of God, and we became a temple of the Holy Spirit. St. Paul says to the early Christians in Corinth, do you know, not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? At baptism, each of us was made a temple of the Holy Spirit, and each one of us here then is a walking, living temple in which God's love is made present to others, made available to others. Just like Jesus cleansed the Jewish temple from what it, was, what it made it distant from God, we are challenged during the season of Lent to cleanse our own personal temples, to make room, more room for Jesus in our lives, to cleanse our hearts and spirits from anything that keeps us from getting closer to Jesus through prayer, fasting, and almsgiving and especially by serving our neighbor in need. The gospel challenges us today to look again at where God is to be found in our lives. We worship God not just in this temple, in a church building. Nowadays, is that in your, around your table at home, around your computer? 
So we worship God not just in a building, our church on a Sunday morning, but we also worship God in the way we live each day and especially in the compassionate and loving deeds we do for others. Lent is a time given to us each year so that we might examine and improve the quality of our relationship with Jesus Christ individually and collectively as church. We listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. We open our hearts and minds to a fresh, deeper, fuller awareness of God within us and around us. We come to a deeper awareness of God's will for us in our lives. For if we let the Holy Spirit cleanse and renew our lives, we will conform more fully to the image and likeness of God. We profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And we turn now in prayer to our Heavenly Father, trusting in God's help for us every day. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, on his apostolic visit to Iraq, that he may be kept safe, and that he will continue to be an instrument of peace and understanding among Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, religions that find their common beginnings in Abraham. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Archbishop Peter and all of our church leaders, that they may have the courage to lead our church through challenging times. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the church, that this Lenten season may be an opportunity for personal and communal transformation of hearts through our prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are negatively impacted by the virus pandemic, for the unemployed and the isolated, the sick and the hospitalized, the hungry and the homeless, that they may know and receive the comfort and compassion of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the efforts of our archdiocese to bring healing to the victims of abuse, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this International Women's Day, we pray for women around the world as they strive for equality, human rights, and justice, that they may be safe from violence and abuse, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick in our homes, hospitals, and long-term care health facilities, and for those who provide compassionate care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For eternal joy and peace for those who have died this past week, we pray for Bradley Cheeseman and Agnes Ebbs, and for all who mourn their loss, that they may find comfort in the prayer, marks of affection, and gestures of friendship shown to them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for the prayers in the quiet of your hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the grace and blessings you give us every day. We make our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. to me 
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life, and being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us, and though time and time again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. From now, even now, you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation, and as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Jesus Christ and a desire to be of service to all while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in. are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love for your Son, who alone is just handed himself to, over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched before, between heaven and earth to become the lasting son of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things to himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, our spouse, the blessed Apostles, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption, and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. We pray with confidence now to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Her Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us, us this day our daily bread. bread. And, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, our trespasses as, we as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we share the peace of Christ now with one another. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion, a prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Thank you. 
Christ. Our communion hymn is Let Us Be Bread 6.4 in Celebrate in Song. Let us be bread, blessed by the Lord, broken and shared, life for the world. Let us be wine, love freely. Let us be one in the Lord. I am the bread of life broken for all. Eat now and hunger no more. Let us be Let us pray. As we pledge and receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our prayer of Pope Francis to Mary for help and protection during the pandemic, we pray, O Mary, you always, always shine in our path, path as a as sign of salvation and of hope. We, we entrust ourselves, ourselves to you, help the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, pain keeping keep our faith firm. firm. Your you salvation of your people know what, know what we, need, we need, and we are we sure you will provide for that as in Cain of Galilee. We, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Thank you for your presence here today and uh, with us at the live stream. We pray that all of you will be well. I'd like to thank uh, Donna Marie and Patty for the music today, and to John here for reading, Philomena for sacristy, all those who help behind the scenes here, John and Brian and Nicholas and Brian who help with the live streaming all the time. So thank all of these people who help to bring these mass, mass every day to many people around the world. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Amen. Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Let us go in peace now, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Our missioning hymn is I Know That My Redeemer Lives, number 647 in the Catholic Book of Worship. <laughs>